Hey everyone, it's Danny here from Conscious Calisthenics back with another ex-vegan interview with Sylvia. Is that how you pronounce your name? Just make sure it's correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. And she's someone that wants to share her story with you because she went through hell and back with the vegan diet. The amount of issues she ran into in this diet was like quite severe. And she just wants to share her message with you in case you're someone that's a vegan that's not thriving and you think that possibly you need to go back to animal foods to regain your health. And yeah, I'll get her to introduce herself in a moment, but I'll just introduce her a little bit first. She embarked on a vegan diet for around four years. Three years of that was a raw vegan diet, one year fruitarian diet. And now she has been on a carnival diet for around two years, which is able to push her in the direction of regaining her health and being as vital as possible and function to best ability. So yeah, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited for this conversation. Yeah, same as well. So yeah, if you could just give us a bit more of um, an introduction than I have about yourself, just so people could get to get to know you a bit and yeah. Okay. Well, I was born and raised in Poland. Um, I We moved to US when I was 13. And when I lived in Poland, we we lived on a farm and kind of um, lived off of food that we grew and animals that we, you know, we had. And we had our own milk, our own pigs and cows and sheep wow. and whatnot. We had our own fruits and vegetables. So that was nice. We literally would, could walk outside in the summer and just grab apples and berries and whatnot. Berries were more of like a wild thing when you had to like go into um, the woods and hunt for them, <laughs> hunt for them. Uh, but yeah, we had it all, you know. And then when we moved to U.S., I, um, I very quickly became... Um, was having many health issues, a lot of depression. And, you know, at that time, I just thought, you know, I'm just missing my friends because I was a teenager. And, but it wasn't that. I was just, I literally was hoping that I would get killed by a bus. Like every time I was going to school, like I was just miserable. Um, so, th and there were other things with my gut that started happening. And when I was a kid, I also struggled with a lot of gut issues. But then once I moved to U.S., um, it became worse with the um, standard American diet. And majority of the uh, ma uh, meals that I was having were made by my mom, but she was still using store-bought stuff, you know, the U.S. standard stuff. And I started noticing um, my energy was just low and things like that. And that's when I kind of became interested um, about nutrition and for whatever reason it was like I always thought it had to do with the food that I was consuming um, so that I started looking into that early early on and from that point I started um, just cleaning up my diet um, and removing things like grains uh, gluten wheat dairy um, and even eggs at some point and then later I discovered the vegan diet that was in college. And the reason why I went vegan, it wasn't so much for health reasons. Um, it was, I watched many documentaries, like I'm sure many of the people who did go vegan did. Um, and the problem with those documentaries are, as we know right now, they're very cherry picked. Um, they show the worst case scenarios. Um, and and that's what, you know, scared me, made me realize like, oh, my God, like the things in America are not the same as like what we used to do. Like when we had uh... animals, like we loved our animals, like my family, when we were uh, when we had them, like we took care of them, you know, like there was none of that, that what I saw in the documentaries. And I realized I'm like, oh, my God, like here in America, like this is the, the craziness that's going on and people are so vicious. Like, I don't want to be part of that. And I thought, like, if I go vegan, I'm going to essentially, like, save the world, you know, and I wanted to turn everybody vegan. And for me, when I did um, go a raw vegan, things didn't necessarily improve um, from a health standpoint. Uh. Like, I already, was, I already was eating a diet that was um, whole food, which to me meant I was eating. My mom was still had a garden, so she was growing 
um, vegetables in the garden. So I had access to that during fall and uh, and that, uh, or from spring to like fall time. So I had good quality produce available to me. And I was still he- eating mostly chicken and pork. Uh, in Poland, we didn't eat beef because we saved our cows for milk and uh-huh. and cheese and butter and stuff like that. So um, my mom would mostly make just dishes made out of chicken and pork. Um, so I was still eating those things. And then when I switched to a uh, vegan diet, I wasn't experiencing any benefit to to it, but I purely stuck with it because of the environmental issues, because of the the issues that were associated with animals and how they were treated. So yeah. that was that one thing. And then later on into the whole diet, and I've learned how you're supposed to sprout and soak the nuts and seeds and all that stuff. But I was starting to get um, many allergic reactions to a lot of the foods that I was eating. And it was mostly uh, nuts and seeds, which I thought if I sprout it, if I soak it, it should be fine. But it wasn't. And that was my main source of uh, protein at that time. And... I, of course, was supplementing with everything that they tell you to supplement. Um, all the um, amino acids that are not available in plant foods. And then later I had to start supplementing with a lot of digestive enzymes. Even though I was uh, raw vegan and they tell you that, you know, the food is so digestible. Like you absorb everything you need from, you know, from raw vegetables and fruits. And I'm like, I was a little bit confused because that did not work like that for me, you know? So, and I followed a lot of the big vegans at that time, which I think by now, sadly, are Um, And then once I started experiencing all these gut issues, I discovered the 80-10-10 diet. Um, which is fruitarian diet, yeah. and I'm sure many people are aware of it, which was supposed to be better for your gut. Um, and because, again, like the fruits are so highly digestible and satiating, I never found that satiation from the fruit alone. Like I actually developed binge eating disorder from that, oh, wow. which I could never be satisfied with. Ye- fruit. Like once I started, I, I literally could look like I was pregnant and feel like I was pregnant, but my brain just wanted to eat and yeah. keep eating. And, and that's very interesting you just said that, because I literally just made a video the other day saying a raw vegan diet causes eating disorders. So you're someone that is validating what I said in that video. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that happened. And the sad part is that from the binge eating, I went into bulimia that lasted for probably six years. Whoa. And it was it just... It, it, I went through a horrible, horrible time, and I never wish upon anybody uh, go, to go through any eating disorder whatsoever, because it is, you know, any addiction, and I call eating disorder an addiction, because in a sense, it is, it feels like it is, and yeah. it's something that, unless you can fast forever, you can just, you know, abstain from food like you could from alcohol or any other substance, the substances. So that um, led to bulimia. Eventually, um, I started having so many problems, like on top of everything else, developed severe, severe um, depression. And I honestly was at a point where I started planning my suicide. Like I I did not want to live anymore. I did not. um, I went through... um, a time when I would go to psychologists and through the talk therapy and it just didn't help me at all. I just knew it was something inside me that was not working properly. That was almost like broken. I'm like, why is my brain not connecting with my gut when my gut is full, but my brain is, it feels like it's starving from nutrition. Wow. So after that, um, somehow I discovered Dr. Jack, and his leptin reset diet um, and he talked about essentially a carnivore-ish diet um, keto diet at that point wasn't popular yet 
Um, and his approach was basically resetting the leptin so that um, you could uh, get that hunger signal turned off uh, once yeah. you reset the leptin. So that got me really interested. And he talked about eating a lot of seafood, especially for women early in the morning within the 30 days of waking up in order to basically reset the leptin and that's what I started doing it was hard at the beginning for me to switch um from you know being fruitarian into eating I, animals but at that time I was just like you know what it's either my life or animals life yeah and, and, would, and would you say that it was hard for you to make the switch because you were just emotionally invested in the vegan diet you had a lot of vegan programming and brainwashing oh my gosh yes and, and you probably of all people know how much of that is uh, contri contributes to people staying and, and the community oh my god there I, there's a lot of amazing vegan people that yeah you know they understand like and they still do it because they think um it makes them like higher spiritually in a sense but they stick with it even they know that consuming animal foods would benefit their bodies um but they still do it for that reason and there's a, a lot of vegans like that who are just amazing people but there are those vicious almost like parasite like yes vegans when they will try to infect everybody around spreading the worst possible things out there like about the meat putrefying in your colon and and you know the fear of the animal that's being um infecting your body emotions and feelings and you're gonna feel that and all of that just like was constantly on the back of head. And when I was at the store the first time, but fish, I think I spent like an hour trying to convince myself to go and buy that fish. And, and again, like all that information, all that from the vegan community was just constantly replaying in my head. And, and it was hard. It was really hard. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah, it's which sounds like a very similar experience. A lot of people, a lot of people get on a vegan diet, think it's the best diet for the animals, the most ethical diet, it's the best diet for the population, it's the diet that everyone should be eating. We all need more fruits and vegetables and plant foods, having too much meat, and meat causes so many different issues, and yeah, and and yeah, one thing I'd like to just go back on, yeah, like you said, it induced an eating disorder in you, which you experienced for six years. Do you did you ever have any? eating disorders previously in your life before that no no i have not none of that none of my family members ever suffered from one um and as a matter of fact i was probably like the first person that struggled with anything of that sort like any i don't want to say any addiction because they there has been um alcohol issues of my in my family on my dad's side uh, but no, like I was the first one yes. with an eating disorder. Yes, yeah, so it's not like you re-triggered re a previous eating disorder or that you had a genetic predisposer or anything. It's definitely something that, yeah. yeah, it's not normal in your family for sure. And yeah, it's really interesting. You said that when you're in Poland that you had a connection with the animals, basically. You saw yeah. them in the best, nat like, best environment for them where they were being treated really well and then... Yeah, obviously, once you came to America and saw things, I guess, like Cowspiracy and these other similar types of documentaries, it's just like, whoa, like it affected you, it sounded like a lot emotionally, so that's why you ended up on the vegan diet. And even though it wasn't working for you and it gave you benefits, you were so emotionally attached to it for very understandable reasons, because we're emotional beings and that's just the nature of the reality with us. And then, you know, you surround yourself with the vegan community and you, you think you're learning more and more about it, but it's all this like negative stuff. That's so not true, you know, and then they poison your mind, uh, with the information, like the meat will cause cancer, the meat will do this and all this negative stuff. And then you convince yourself that, Oh my God, like I can't eat meat. Like it will kill me. Like literally it will kill me, you know? And it's like, how do you go reverse that um, after 
you know, I don't want to say so many years because they have been vegans who've been doing it for decades. Um, I know fruitarians who would go, their body would get so weak. Um, they would start losing their teeth. Like they would literally look like walking skeleton was just skin covered, you know, over it. And they would still just persist with it, like believing that this is the best thing ever. And I do think that with the vegan diet, there's a lot of, uh, especially women, but I don't want to say that it's just women who suffer from a body dysmorphia oh, or yeah. Im body image um, issues. And I've had that. I There was a point when I looked anorexic, and that was before the bulimia and all that stuff. And I still felt like I was fat. Um, and wow. I, before that, I never, I never had issues with my weight ever. Like that was never something like in forefront for me. But for whatever reason, I was thick, thin. My arms looked, oh my gosh, my my arms were so thin, and I still thought I was fat. And the scary part is that, you know, your family is watching you, seeing you basically slowly dying and um, almost like dissolving in your own body. And they want to say something. But in my case, there were they were afraid that, yeah. you know, that they would hurt my feelings or whatnot, you know. And then later when I was uh, brave enough to talk to to them about all my issues that I've been going through. They're like, oh my God, thank God you said something because it was so painful to watch. Like I didn't know oh, what to yeah. say because, you know, it's the hardest part is uh, for the family to, to say something, to talk about, you know, like I've been covering uh, up my bulimia for so long and nobody knew, like nobody knew I was going through that experience. And, you know, I went through looking anorexic to when I went, um, when this, uh, it turned to bulimia, like I started putting on weight and that's when my family actually was thinking that, oh, everything is like going back to normal. Like I'm, uh. I'm healing sense because I'm putting on weight, but nobody knew, nobody even suspected like what was going on. So that was kind of wow. like, you know, living in the shadow and being afraid to to talk about it with anybody and just struggling you know by myself wow. because there is a lot of shame around oh it, yeah you know ain't a lot of shame about the uh, around that and now you know on carnivore within the carnivore community i know a man who have exposed it as well who are bodybuilders who said that they suffered uh, from bulimia for so long you know and and it's more out there, you know, like more males are coming out um, and talking about eating disorders as well. So it's not just gender specific. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And yeah, to go through all of that on your own without getting the emotional support you needed and be able to voice what's going on for you like that is such a challenge just to live your everyday life like that. Like <sighs> that's the that's the problem with me, because I feel like if I talk to the people I love about my struggles I bother them in a way or I like like I don't want to put that on them so yeah. I'm always like oh I'm just gonna figure it out on my own yeah. you know like I, I'll, I know I'll find a way and I always do that's a good part about it I always do but um, I unfortunately sometimes suffer unnecessarily yeah for sure and I can definitely relate to that so yeah, yeah. for sure <laughs> um, yeah Yes, it's, man, yeah, it's really, really interesting to hear this, it's like, yeah, so, what, did you get any more negative effects apart from what you shared, which obviously a lot of different things, and if you did, if you could share those, and then I'll ask you a question afterwards, if not, then that's fine. Well, before even um, the whole bulimia happened, because I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's not the vegan diet, it's the bulimia. Well, the bulimia happened because of the vegan diet in the first place. But even before that, I my body got so weak that I literally was fracturing my ribs like almost once a month. And it's if anybody went through a broken rib, it's pretty close to like when you fracture it, the pain is so horrible. 
like you can't go to a bathroom without a pain you, you can't you can barely lift your hands up without pain you can't laugh without pain um so i went through that and it was from basically just carrying a box like um against my rib and i tripped and i tripped against something and it pulled uh, a lot of pressure on my rib and that's how it cracked and I'm like, oh, my God, is that all it takes to break my bones now? And it was just scary. And on top of that, I have lost my uh, menstrual cycle. I literally haven't had my period for probably three years. Um, but to me, that was just, oh, you know, oh, that's nice. I don't have to deal with, with the period. You know, that's convenient. Um, I was young and, and just stupid and I was into also into running, but eventually I had to stop that because I just got so weak that I didn't even have the energy to continue with, uh, playing soccer. I was on the soccer team in college, so I couldn't do that anymore. Then I started running, um, on my own. Eventually I had to give that up because I just didn't have the energy to do it anymore. Um, so there are a lot of things. Um, wow. Those are the main things yeah. that I'm coming up with um, at yeah. the moment. But aside from just the digestive issues that have been the worst uh, for me, and I'm still dealing with a lot of that stuff, but carnivore has definitely helped eliminate many, many of the issues that, you know, started because of it. Yeah. Yes, it just sounds like you literally got to a point where it's just like if you had carried on for longer, maybe till the day where we're at now, the year we're in, maybe you wouldn't be here. Like literally, it was wasting your whole body away in every single way. Like this was really, really mm. severe. I honestly, I know that I wouldn't be here. If it, if it wasn't for the animal foods, I would probably... And if I stuck with the um, fruitarian diet, I would probably commit suicide. Yeah. I was literally at a stage when I was starting to plan my suicide. Yeah. Yeah. So literally you did one of the most self-loving things possible. And at the animal foods, it's just like you're the number one priority. It's like there's a lot of vegans right. that become very anti-human and pro-animal and say, well, you were never vegan and all this other crap and just hate on people. But it's like yeah like if you hadn't done that you wouldn't be here today so it's like that was like so important for you to do that absolutely essential right yeah, yeah i agree yeah for sure and would you say during your journey because obviously you're into raw veganism did you ever get into the whole like detoxification mentality where you thought you just needed to <laughs> detox more and this is why you had the issues going on what was your whole experience oh, with that oh my god it was i whenever I would um, ask somebody in the community, it was always, that was the main thing. Oh, you're just detoxing. Like any problem I had or any issue, it was just like, just keep going. You're detoxing. It's always like you're detoxing something. I remember at one point I started losing my toenails and that was the thing like, oh, you're detoxing the old stuff. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, what? A, like, if I start losing my limbs, is that going to be a detox <laughs> excuse as well? You know, it's, it, it was always, that was always like the first thing, you know. Oh, I, I lost most of my hair. Oh, yeah, you're just detoxing, you know. Like, it's going to come back and it's going to be more beautiful. And it's going to be all, you know, regenerated from just the fruits and grown on fruits and vegetables and all the love and peace and whatever i'm like yeah I, I honestly can't believe that i believed that bullshit for so long you know but lesson learned you know yeah for sure and yeah there's just so many dogmatic teachers out there in the vegan movement the vegan movement and a lot of us tend to put trust in certain people that aren't necessarily the most trustworthy people they're not necessarily bad people they're just people that are not really sharing information that is necessarily true or good for people they've got a good interest but yeah yeah and you know later on i found out that the vegans who did thrive were kind of cheating you know probably like twice a month uh, on by eating seafood and i actually met one guy when i was in guatemala and he's like oh yeah i'm vegan but then uh, we invited him to our place and we were having steaks because at that time I was already carnivore and all I was eating was uh, meat. So we invited him and he he's like, oh, yeah, can I have some of that? I'm like, I'm like, what, you want my meat? He's like, yeah, I eat meat maybe like once or twice um, 
a month just to like I, I don't even remember what he said but he's like it makes me feel really good so I can um go longer on on vegan diet I'm like what I'm like how <laughs> I was so confused by that I'm like how does that work he's like oh yeah after eating meat like I get uh, morning wood yeah and you know like i miss it when i go too long without me i'm like okay well <laughs> i guess good for you you know at least he was he was open enough to admit that and he was not a type of person that he was out there spreading yeah. around um you know the vegan dogma or promoting it for health or whatever reasons you know he was a yogi so i can't, i guess that com- kind of comes you know goes together but yeah 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 and this is something that we talked about uh previously i think via skype messages it's like like you said there's a few people that you thought were like vegan that weren't and then you start being around them and you notice that they aren't and the same for me i noticed so many of my idols have started being around they're either like saying they're raw vegan when they're not raw vegan or being around them and saying they're thriving online and you think they are but once you're around them they're not thriving and there's certain yeah. things they're doing that yeah necessarily isn't exactly in alignment with uh, what they've been saying on YouTube. Exactly, yeah. And it's kind of like you know when you when you see that happen, you get so confused like oh, what's going on? Like why are they either lying or like you try to like stick with it because it's almost like it becomes this like religion, it becomes like your life, your identity yes. and you know, and, and many people are afraid, like, who are they going to be without that? You know, like, what am I if I'm not vegan? And many people struggle with that, you know, and this is kind of like what I am trying to stay away from with the whole carnivore uh, way of eating, you know, not identifying myself with the way I eat, you know, because that's, If I want to eat something that's not meat, that doesn't come from, like, animal kingdom, and my body's not going to freak out when I eat it, I'm just going to eat that, you know? Like, I like to travel. I like to go to um, different places, and there's a food that um, I know I want to eat, want to try. Like, I want to be able to try that and not be like, oh, my God, no, I can't have it because it's not carnivore or it's not whatever, you know? Yeah, and that's really good for you to voice that. And this seems to be a reoccurring trend with everyone that I'm interviewing that's been vegan and now gone back to eating meat and other animal foods, whether it's carnivore or whatever type of meat-based or animal-based diet, where they come to a realization so much of their identity was built around their diet. It's like, I'm, I'm fruitarian or I am vegan or I am this. And then going through the experience that you're saying, which is amazing where, yeah, you do say I eat the kind of diet so other people could understand, like they know what it is exactly. And so you can talk about it and obviously you've got amazing benefits. It's good to share that with people, but not trading one box for another box and like holding on to it for dear life, which is just the ego wanting to hold on to it. when it's just mm. like, no, I am not a fruit I'm not this, I just am that I am. I am me. That's that's all. Like so that's really good that you manage to have like this self realization process with this and yeah, not end up trading one for religion for another religion and being very open to, well, this is what's working for me now. But if I need to switch things up or I wanna try other things, then I will. Like that just seems like you've managed to come from an eating disorder background to forming the most healthiest relationship with yourself, but also the food you're eating as well, which I think is so important. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it feels so freeing to be able to just eat without, you know, and even not even like going through this whole cycle of analyzing everything, you know, but even like being around other people and judging them, for what they're eating yeah. you know i'm at a place where i'm like okay that's cool you want to eat that that's fine that's none of my business like what you're eating why you're eating it um eat it you know but i was at a place where i'd be like oh my god like how like my i'm vegan like oh my god i'm so good like your diet is so <laughs> shitty like you know and, and it's kind of like it, it's so funny because you know like thinking back um and and now knowing what I know, it was just 
it was it's crazy like the mindset around food and just like almost constantly thinking about food and constantly eating food it's almost like you can't go away from it it's it's like food is the center of everything you know like where I was like when I was vegan I was constantly planning um what my next meal is gonna be I was never satisfied it was just like everything was around food versus now I'll have a meal and sometimes it might be just one meal sometimes it might be two meals depending how I feel if I'm hungry for more I'll eat more but I'm more in tune with my body I'm more um open to listen to what's going on within versus just like you know listening to everybody else telling you you have to do this you have to do that six meals a day you have to like keep your sugar stable therefore you have to have the six meals um you need this many carbs or not no carbs whatsoever and now i'm just like you know what i already know what my body needs and i'm Uh, just gonna listen to it yeah so th- that whole thing you just explained, you started to be able to not just form a good relationship with yourself, but also just with other people, just how you perceive other people as a whole, which uh, is really good. And the, the, one of the best things is like, which I keep saying to people in videos, is being able to become in tune with your internal navigation system, not listening to things outside yourself. It's good to gather information for sure, but it's about experimenting with yourself, see what works, what doesn't work, listen to your body of when it is hungry, but obviously, yeah, not or being on a vegan diet, you can't really do intuitive eating so well because you're never being satiated, like you said, so it just becomes out of control. And yeah, the diet, as it seems to you and many other people, is that it just becomes your whole human experience, the diet, the diet. It's just like everything. It's just like all consuming. And it's like, well, okay, it's good to focus upon diet, but I'm sure just like, yeah, I'm sure for you, you just prefer that, yeah, I am knowledgeable on diet and I do eat as best as I can, but also having it so I'm not hungry all the time so I can focus upon many other important things in my human experience. Exactly. And, you know, like for me, I've always been a creative person. I always love painting and drawing. I always wanted to learn more, like how to play different instruments and stuff like that. And just being so focused on food, I felt felt like that kind of like took away like all the time yeah. that I could have committed to the creative process that, you know, I, I love so much. And then I also like helping other people and, you know, by creating maybe videos or whatever it may be that could help other people. Now I have time to do that versus where before I was just like, no, I, I have a whole bunch of vegetables and fruits to wash, chop up, blend, whatever it may be, or juice, because I did also go through that yeah. juicing process when it was just so, it was crazy, you know, and I always was more into um, buying stuff, food locally than going to a grocery store. I always, we either had a garden at our house um, where I could source it from, or I would always find farms um i used to live in chicago and uh around chicago there were many many farms that i could go to and source that locally and i always tried to eat uh, seasonally but then once i found the 80 10 10 and they tell you that yeah it's okay to eat pineapples imported from god knows where and papayas in the middle of winter when it's freezing cold in Chicago, you know, it's like, it's okay, you're going to be thriving. I'm like, no, I can prove you, you can't thrive on that, you know, (laughs) and I prove myself. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, it sounds very like me when I was in England before I moved to Thailand to pursue the fruit diet that would be more optimal here. It's just like I was eating like a raw vegan fruit-based diet, 80-10-10 for around a year before leaving and in a cold environment and everything imported, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah exactly absolute... and that's really good for the environment right oh like, yeah for sure save the planet doing that. Yeah. yeah yeah for sure yeah that's very interesting to hear so yeah what inevitably because obviously it was inevitable led you to get into the point of saying right this isn't working and i need to switch it up and what was your process to start making the switch up your diet and going towards a carnivore diet um, it was basically like the 
thoughts, the depression that, you know, and being, it was essentially my doctor telling me like, listen, if you don't start eating animal foods, like you're just gonna, like he was just straight up with me. Um, they've tried like being gentle and baby me around. He's like, you know what? Like, I'm tired of this. You're just going to die if you don't start <laughs> eating meat, you know? So I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> that's good enough for me, you know? And, and I'm not going to say that like right away I went out there and, and started yeah. eating meat and, and everything. It definitely took a lot of mental stress. And, and at that time, I mean, I was still struggling with the depression and everything else. And, and having thought about that, but at the same time, like having hope that, you know what, like if, if I eat a little bit of animals and I get my life back, then so be it, Yeah. you know? So it was kind of like this hope, um, that, oh my God, like I can do this, you know, I can, I can have a normal life again. Yeah. Nice. And yeah, this like really listened carefully to what she's saying she got to a point where it almost destroyed her and a lot of vegans do this where it gets to breaking point and this is why she's sharing a message you don't have to go to the degree that she went and, and held on to it for so long this is something that i really want to stress so when you started eating animal foods or like changing up your diet what did you first start to experiment with and what changes did you notice um first i started with uh, like fatty fish and after the just the first day like the benefits on my brain were so extreme it was almost like my depression lifted right away and I'm like oh my god this is incredible like how how is this even happening you know and and I followed that just basically eating a lot of fish in the morning for for like two weeks and the eating disorder um, went away almost like I, I did eat massive quantities of it. Like, yeah. and, but I was at a point where I'm like, you know what? Like, that's okay. If that's what my body needs, I'm just gonna like keep it, not try to get rid of the food and through ex over exercising or through purging. I'm just gonna stick with that. It feels good with my body. And I would eat this massive meal in the morning. I wouldn't have to eat, eat till the next day. So I was basically just doing yeah. OMAD one yeah. meal a day. And uh, later on, and I wasn't exercising at all at that time either, because um, one of the things that I've learned from Jack Cruz is that when you do the over exercising, that's not good for the leptin either. So he kind of recommends, you know, just chill out enjoy the food and see how you feel and yeah. later on like throw in some um mobility but don't do like any crazy um a long distance running which i used to do i would you know run ah, for okay. like four hours in the morning um in a fasted state um so i stopped doing that and then my body started healing uh, very very quickly wow. and yeah, and I stuck with it for a while. Then I kind of discovered the ketogenic diet, um, which essentially I was already doing it. Because um, when I did go through the whole leptin thing, we said thing like he, uh, Dr. Jack Cruz, he was basically recommending like eating a little bit of like green vegetables, like if you wanted to, but he didn't want to go say it straight up, like avoid all the vegetables because then. I think at that time, a lot of people would just like freak out, like, oh my God, like, why are you telling me not to eat vegetables? Are you crazy? So he said like, yeah, if you want some vegetables, like eat some green stuff, you know, if you want to, to me, it didn't sound appealing at that time. So I was just basically eating um, a lot of seafood and then a lot of like fatty pork. Um, so I went through that phase and I discovered, I discovered the bulletproof um, yeah. diet, the whole biohacking community. Um, I went into that a lot and I started, I was still into like detoxing and the coffee uh, animals and, and all that stuff and experimenting with different gadgets to like even better improve my brain health, you know, cause I've, <laughs> I thought like, Oh, Oh my God, like if I can improve my brain with just, you know, switching my food alone, like 
what else can I do by incorporating like all these different diets, uh, not diets, but gadgets. Yeah. So I was just like trying to step it up a little bit with something, you know, but there was nothing more powerful than the nutrition, uh, providing yeah. the nutrition that my that my brain needed in order to operate. And the first thing that I absolutely love was just like the evenness from in my mood <laughs> and it's like calming down yeah. and not being in this constant like like almost like anxiety. I don't want to necessarily call it anxiety, but this constant like up and down, up and down, yeah. up and down. And that's what I love the most. And what was funny to me at one point I was into yoga and I thought like the vegan diet would go in with yoga so perfectly. So I started with the yoga and I would do, um, when I would practice, I would be so hungry. And my teacher, you know, she would go on and talk and talk. And I would think in my head, I'm like, just finish. I'm so hungry. I just want, and I would be so angry inside. And I'm like, wow. oh, what's wrong with me? Like, I'm doing this practice in order to, like, be calm, to be in peace. And here I am, angry, hangry, yeah. you know, just wanting her to hurry up and finish so I can get out and eat a banana Ooh. or something, wow, that, you know? That's really interesting to hear. I didn't have the same experience to you, but I can understand because my girlfriend's been teaching people yoga for 20 years, like Ashtanga yoga and yoga therapy. <laughs> And when we met, she kept trying to get me to do yoga. And this was when I went downhill rapidly on the vegan diet. Every time I do it, my central nervous system would just fire up and I'd get all stressed out and overwhelmed and start crying or get angry. And it was just like, this is meant to be a calming thing, like you said, but it was just like my whole body was just, everything was misfiring. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and my, my teacher, she would say, oh, it's just this angry emotions that you need to release. Yes. I'm like, yes okay yeah I, I get that you know I kind of like resonated with that but then I started doing yoga when I was on carnivore diet and that was a totally different experience I'm like this is the piece that <laughs> I was almost coming with the piece into the practice yeah. and it made the practice so much more enjoyable and oh my god like that's why I kept coming back to to doing uh, practicing wow. yoga but on vegan diet, I just couldn't do wow. it. it. I literally felt angry all the time. Yeah, for sure. Of my features. Yeah, I can understand why. So yeah, you went from being like extremely malnourished and like hungry all the time to, wow, you eat the fish, you get amazing benefits. And then you're not hungry all the time, so then you can focus upon things you want to do and actually be able to do them when you go to do them without getting overwhelmed and stressed out. And yeah, something I just want to say is like, so many vegans out there will say, well, you can't get such amazing benefits just from eating an animal food like the one time. There's quite a few people saying um, on the interviews that I keep making, you're paying these people to say these things. This isn't like some magic. Like, what is this? I think <laughs> oh we're just lying God. and these are staged actors. But I experienced it. You've experienced it. The amount of the people experience it. So, yeah, what do you have to say to people like that? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I... I, I'm I'm still waiting for the paycheck. I mean, if somebody's paying me for you know <laughs> saying yeah. what I'm saying, but the only benefit for me, um, the only I mean uh, the most profound benefit is the health, and I just want to share that with other people. Yeah. I'm not, you know, getting paid for anything. Um, we wish we were. <laughs> uh, yeah, we wish we were. I mean. <laughs> Uh, even like sometimes like on my um instagram like i'll post some meat that from a farm that i enjoy like i don't get paid for that you mm -hmm. know like i'm definitely I, one thing i've learned is being open and honest with people and if somebody wants to follow what i'm doing do that you know not everybody's ready for the honest truth mm -hmm. um everybody has to come to that um, at their own. Yeah. So like, I'm not forcing anything on anybody. Like I was when I was vegan, I wanted to turn my whole family to vegan. Yeah. <laughs> but now I'm just like, you know what, you do you, I'm gonna stick to doing what I'm doing um, because I do feel healthy, strong, yeah. and I feel like I keep getting better. So yeah, that's, yeah. if yeah. people want, people are going to think what they want to think regardless of yeah. what we say, what we do, you know, so, and it's on them, it's, they have to work on this, yes. you know, and, and what's within here. 
yeah. like and stop focusing on everybody yeah. else if they're truly struggling if they truly want to hear uh, heal that they're gonna look the other way very quickly you know and stop dismissing you know the evidence that's out there yeah which the evidence for you is like you listen to other people but you tried it out and you got freed from literally it giving you so many amazing profound benefits so yeah what other benefits did you start to notice over a period of time and was there a significant difference once you switched to a carnivore based diet um yeah when i when i was uh went keto and then i tried going <laughs> i went keto and i tried doing the plant-based keto for ah. i don't i don't even know why i wanted to go back to doing that um I guess because, you know, I was always into measuring and testing stuff. So I had the uh, meter for ketones and glucose and all that stuff. And I found that if I uh, eat less protein, my number, um, my ketone number would be higher, you know. But then I started noticing, I'm like, okay, my number is higher. So I should be feeling like yeah. more brain power, more more energy. But I'm like... I'm not feeling any better. Like I'm not really experiencing any benefit from having a higher ketone number. Huh. So I'm like, oh, what's going on over here? And I started feeling again, like these, like, like urges to binge again on, on food. Uh -huh. And I would start eating like eight avocados in one sitting. Whoa. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm going back to where I used to be. I'm like, I, I don't want that to happen. Um, so within that time, I also started experiencing a lot of gut issues again. And I went through a whole MRSA and necrotizing fasciitis when I ended up in the hospital uh, in ICU for a week um, with a massive infection. And I do believe it was, uh, it, st it started because infections are kind of tricky. If you do have enough of amino acids in your body, the your body can fend itself away from infection. Yeah. If not, then it, it's a little bit harder for the body. And it has to do with a lot of with immune system and all that stuff. I'm not going to go into yeah. it. But I went through all of that. I was in the hospital for a week. I had uh, so many antibiotics go through my body during that time wow. because they did not know what was going on. It literally looked like... I had a snake underneath my skin on my torso that it was all filled with pus. And for those people who don't know what necrotizing wow. fasciitis is, it's basically your own body eating itself. Wow. And the debris from that is the pus that's left. Wow. And so my muscles were essentially eating themselves. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. I, yeah. So I went uh, uh, through three surgeries to clean up, clean up the infection before they uh, find wow. found the right antibiotic to um, that would work. Once they did that, I got out of the hospital and my gut was even worse than it was before. Yeah, for sure. um, I drinking water alone hurt my gut. I'm Whoa. like, so what's going on over here? I'm like, I can't, I can't believe I'm going back to this. And, um, Within that time, I also found um, the medical medium, I believe. Yes. So it was called the book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that guy talks about a lot of cooked starches and cooked, essentially cooked vegan diet. And I'm like, well, I haven't really tried cooked vegan. Like, maybe that will help me. And I totally forgot, like, about all these mental issues and other stuff that I was going through when I was on the vegan diet. But I convinced myself that... If I do cooked vegan, high on starches, it's just going to uh, heal my gut. And it didn't take very long for me to start experiencing, uh, again, like the binging and uh, the brain stuff, the depression coming on again. I'm like, okay, I can't go through this again. Like, I'm not going to put myself through that. Um, so then somehow I found the carnivore diet and it sounded crazy to me and when I first heard about it of course I thought like oh my god they're gonna get cancer colon cancer like that was you know going through my head and then I learned more about it and I figured you know what this is like my one thing that I need to try you know and it's all making sense 
and granted like all these diets before made sense for me so I was very cautious you know with the carnivore diet um, but uh, I decided to try it and a lot of the gut issues that I went through um, through the ketogenic diet that were, I was having getting from even eating stuff like spinach with you know with my in my salad with sardines like would give me jo a lot of joint pain okay that was gone um a lot of the bloating a lot of the i would get like on top of my stomach like this burning and it wasn't like acid reflux it was just almost like uh, the gut lining was in there and it was like open wound Whoa. and you poured uh, vinegar on top of it so that was all gone all the crazy gut stuff joint pain was gone um constant inflammation was gone like the brain fog was gone and when I um, did go carnivore, you know, there are different levels of it. I kind of just stuck with uh, meat, water, and salt. Um, some people do dairy. Some people add cheese and um, eggs. And but that was that was uh, what worked for me at that uh, time. So. And was would you say you were doing like the lion's diet? Was you just eating beef, or what were you doing? Like what type of meats were you eating? I am not super familiar with the lion's diet. I know that Michaela Peterson is yeah. the one that um, started it, and I'm not super familiar yeah, with like, the, uh, um, the rules. Yeah, I just mentioned it because it's like they literally have salt water and just beef only. So that's you said the salt water only and then meat. So yeah. Yeah. So for me, it was um, I started with like experimenting with different animals, but later on, I just it was just beef, um, water, and salt. Yeah. And lamb sometimes. Yeah, okay, cool. And did you start to notice over a period of time, obviously you got a lot of benefits short term, but did you notice over a longer period of time, because obviously you've been doing it for around two years, that you just started improving in many different ways? And even maybe in ways that you didn't know that you would improve and get certain benefits as well? Right. Well, the first benefit um, that, well, not first, but the gut issues definitely the hormones uh balanced out i finally got my period back oh, wow. because even on well no that ha i got my period back on the leptin reset but then i started messing with the plant-based keto and that kind of messed up my my period and hormones and okay. my cycle all that stuff again and then back on carnivore it normalized and wow unless I mess around too much with fasting and exercising too much, uh, that will um, compromise that balance. So I try to be very aware of um, not overdoing on things yeah. because there are many people who do overdo on fasting and I, I see it, especially women. Um, so I try to be aware of that and not overdo it. Um, then um, a lot of you know strength my bones strengthen. I do DEXA scan to measure my uh, uh, muscle and, and bone bone uh, quality and all that stuff. That has improved uh, immensely. Now it's a little bit above the normal. So I'm very happy about that. I did go through a knee break um, while I was on carnivore diet. So, um, so, you know, like, but that was just me doing stupid stuff <laughs> i was rock climbing and i had a really bad fall um i think anybody would break uh, a bone yeah. doing what i was doing but uh it healed quickly uh, on the carnivore um same thing with the necrotizing fasciitis because i was still um recovering from that um, on carnivore and my surgeon was like i don't know what you're doing but whatever you're doing it's working really well because my wounds were really wide open um and on some of the pictures on instagram you can see the scars so that's what it's from like people think that i was fighting some crazy animal but oh, no that's wow. just necrotizing fasciitis wow. i know like fighting a fighting a bear or a lion sounds more exciting than necrotizing fasciitis but um that's what the scars are from if people are curious um Wow, so you start, so you notice benefits just from listening to your body and seeing the changes, but then you've got your surgeon that's noticing it, then you're getting certain tests oh, done yeah. that showed improvements. It was just like the evidence was just oh, yeah. like so transparent. This is working. Yeah, the healing from anything. Um, 
while on carnivore diet has been very quick, like very, very quick. And now I'm eating organ meats. Um, I don't know if they're necessary for everybody. I do think that um, for people who are coming off of vegan vegetarian diets, there can be essential yes. to replenish the body. Um, because for me, when I did, um, I noticed that my body was just starving for nutrition. And that's why I kept just like eating so much until I felt like it was enough. Like my body was saturated with nutrition. And that was kind of like my body telling me like, oh, you don't need more than this. And that's kind of how I got my um, satiation back and knowing where I should stop eating and stop the binging craziness. Uh, you know? Okay. So nice. I do think that, um, especially for vegans, it does matter. Like the organic meats do matter. Um, and I know that it can be hard starting off uh, with with organ meats, but now I enjoy it. And again, like I grew up on that stuff in Poland. Like that was normal, normal yeah. thing. You know, as kids, we would eat chicken livers with scrambled eggs and stuff like that. So it was normal for us. Okay, yeah, that's really good for you to make people aware of like the sort of um, transition that you went through when you first started eating animal foods because like, I guess some people say well she's always hungry at the time she had like eating disorders and then she's gone to eating one meal a day which is another extreme thing and she's eating loads of animal food so she's trading one eating disorder for another but like you said over a period of time because you're getting the nutrition that you've been lacking so long you then your food intakes is, is not had needed to be so high and I think it's another important thing you said if you've become come from a very deficient diet where you become extremely deficient organ meats uh, i would say a really really a good thing like for the exact reasons that you're saying for sure yeah yeah and you know like i understand where a lot of vegans come from and i know that eating organ meats can be hard like really hard <laughs> and some but you know like even eating something like egg yolks is super beneficial especially if you do raw egg yolks they fill with folate and the things that and choline that are so essential for the brain you know and whole body um and things like oysters you know oh, raw yeah. oysters they're super super loaded with all these nutrients so even starting with things like that you know it doesn't have to be necessarily eating a raw beef liver you know or or something more crazy like that um, so yeah, there's steps, like slow steps so you can build up to that. Um, but like I said, for some people who are not as deficient, it might not be necessary, yeah. but yeah. for most, most ex vegans, I think that's, um, it can be very, very beneficial. Yeah. So you, yeah, for sure. And it's good that you was able to make such like an informed decision on like, what you'd learn around nutrition with a carnivore diet and knowing I need certain nutrient dense foods at a certain period of time and, and that you went through that. And what did you have you at any point experimented with anything else? Have you experimented with like raw dairy, raw butter, raw cream, bone broth? Like, yeah, what's your experience with these things, if any? I've uh, did exper uh, experiment with raw dairy. Um, I, and I think that was probably before the fish. I tried the raw milk. Um, that I found a really good quality raw milk from a local farmer. And that was the A2 type milk that yeah. more people are tolerant to. But in a, I had just a few sips of it and literally my... It was the weirdest experience ever because it felt like all my muscles started contracting wow. it, it was the weirdest thing i'm like oh my god like and then all of a sudden <clears throat> i got super sleepy and i just crashed like wow. I, I felt like um somebody drained energy out of me and then i did test my glucose level it shoot up really high it wow. went to over 200 wow. um which is very high and so i figured i probably do have some insulin issues going on and glucose issues going on so um then i i tried after that i stay away from dairy for a long time and then decided to um try my own uh, kefir that i made 
that did not work too well. Like again, I crashed pretty badly. In Poland, we used to have something that we called sour milk, which you essentially uh, leave um, a raw milk outside in. Um, you don't refrigerate it and you just let it sit in like warm temperature yeah. for a little bit yeah. and then it like ferments on its own yeah. it takes few days yeah but we, then, yeah, yeah we we uh, sorry to interrupt you yeah we do that it's called uh, like what we would call it is clabber milk so you just leave it on the side and the way and everything starts to separate the fat starts to separate yeah. That. Yeah. yeah 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 you had this like nice creamy layer like the the most fat goes to top then you have so you can you have like almost like the what they call it here in America, like heavy cream on top, and it's kind of sweet. Then under that layer, you have that thick uh, sour cream layer, yeah. and under that layer, you have that sour milk or yeah. Um, yeah. whatever else. Milk. Yeah. I, I guess it's like yeah, I guess it's like kefir type thing, um, but it just happens naturally. Like you don't have to add any cultures to it. It's just the bacteria from the from the air alone that you know um, ferments and the sugars ferment in the milk itself. So, but I experimented with that and that um, did not go well either. My glucose shoot it up again like super high, and then from the sweet cream I would get so many skin issues, problems, zits all over. Um, so I start I went away from that and then I thought well maybe if I try uh, try. Um, goat's dairy or sheep dairy like that's um gonna be better and again it wasn't uh, okay. um i have a lot of people i'm on instagram on my instagram say like oh you should try the sheep dairy it's so much better i'm like yeah i tried it <laughs> yeah and i know that i have still a lot of uh healing um my gut to do um so We'll see, you know, yeah. we'll see how it goes. I did experiment with making my own bone broth, but um, um, I do still deal with a lot of histamine issues. Okay. So anything that's slowly cooked or long or cooked for a long time gives me um, a lot of inflammation in my body. And uh, sometimes I will get hives and itchy skin. Yeah. So I try to stay away from that. And then at one point I did deal with... Um, SIBO and SIFO and uh, when you deal with that you don't really want to do any uh, collagenous um, anything you know especially bone broth because you will get bloated you will probably get diarrhea from it um, and I've had many clients that do deal with that so I tell them stay away from the collagen powders from the bone broths and clean up what's going on with your gut and then maybe later you can introduce that which is hard because a bone broth is so healing for the okay. gut you know and the gut lining so it's like but you have to eliminate it for a certain time yes yeah. all of that yeah and i think it's very amazing that you just shared that all because like for me i can drink loads of milk every day and i'm fine with raw honey as well but there's like some people where the health went downhill so much and this is what people need to be aware what she is doing is working for her, what I'm doing is working for me and vice versa. It might not work if we swap things up. So it's like just accepting where you're at and being aware that certain even carnival foods could affect you in a negative way. And like she went down the whole path of like, okay, you've got A1 beta casein milk, which is most cow milk. So then she, she's tried the A2 beta casein cow's milk, which most people will be fine with normally, but then she tried the cows and the sheep. So it's just like, she's listened to her body and was like, no, I can't add this now, maybe I can in the future, so she removed it. And and that you become very aware of like histamines, I guess like oxalates, like salicylates, all these other plant toxins, yeah. and you just realize, well, this is where I'm at now. I listen to my body, this is what's working, this thing doesn't work. So it's just like your own experimentation of like trying out yeah. things and, and listening to your body. Yeah, it is, you know, like to your point, it is very compelling to hear everybody else's story and share their story and then you want to jump into what they're doing and what I keep telling people find out for yourself what works for you yeah maybe try a little bit of this try a little bit of that but don't go extremes like right away um just find out for yourself like don't try to copy exactly everything of what this influencer is doing or that influencer is doing or this health guru you know just do a little experiment a little here and there and find out for yourself 
Yeah, for sure. I think that is absolute key because so many people can just look at people like us and want to do it and be like, oh, why is this not working for me? And it's just like, yeah, yeah it could be another <laughs> dangerous path to go down for sure. So yeah. where would you say your diet is now? Like, what does your diet look like now? And, and then where would you say you're at with your whole diet and your healing journey? Um, I still believe I have a lot of healing to do. Um, um, right now, it's still purely carnivore. And I'm trying to get into a more um, a working out and doing more like heavy weight lifting just to strengthen my bones even more and put on a little bit more muscle. Um, but I, I've always been into um, cycling, okay. you no know, humping, jumping on a bike and just cycling forever. Um, is like my freedom. That's what I used to do as a kid when I wanted to run away from home. I would just hop on my bike and that that's my freedom, you know. And I did um, do an experiment when I... Uh, uh, rode my bike from Wisconsin to um, to Chicago, and that's over 200 miles. And I did that on the plant-based ketogenic diet. Oh, that was wow. just the most stupid thing you could possibly do. I was so worn out. Um, and then I did it again on the carnivore diet, which was much better. Wow. But I do believe that you know um, there's a um, there's a time where I could use some carbs like maybe white rice which for me um is probably like the one carbohydrate that i don't react to at this moment and probably certain fruits but i don't want to um i still do feel like i have like this sweetness addiction so i don't want to go that route so if i do want to uh improve my performance sports performance i might uh, start experimenting with a little bit of uh, rice here and there and see what happens um, but right now I'm just purely eating, uh, meats, um, mostly beef, some chicken, if I feel like it, um, organ meats here and there. Um, and that's mostly mm. that, you know, water for, um, to drink and salt for, um, for like a supplement, you know, just to stay hydrated. And I know that a lot of people think that salt is actually dehydrating, but no, it's not. Um, yeah, especially if you listen to people in the raw carnival movement, and a lot of them seem to think that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> salt is another evil. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's basically it. Yeah, you know, okay, still, cool. still carnivore. Yeah. I, and I've learned so much about the carnivore diet, the digestion of the meat, the nutrients in the meat itself, and uh, the nutrition of the animal, and that I, in. in I don't believe that I do need plants in order to thrive yeah. um, for my body to, uh, to stay healthy. But in terms of performance, sports performance, I do think that I could benefit a little bit more by adding a little bit of carbs here and there. Yeah, yeah, which I can understand. And yeah, w what I'm going to do is, we're not going to end now, but we're in shortly, is uh, I'll put links down below for her Instagram and other social media platforms. But if you look on Instagram, she is a very fit person. For sure. She's at a point where she looks pretty fit and strong to me now. And like hearing her before where our bones are breaking all the time and everything else. Yeah. And yeah, I think a lot of people would want to be able to get down to the body fat percentage you have as well. Just like me, I have quite low body fat percentage. Some people like it, some people don't. But yeah, you've seen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've had a few comments that, you know, that I'm still, that I'm promoting unhealthy body image, unrealistic and People don't understand that I'm coming from a place where I was much, much thinner. So for me, being at a point where I'm at right now is good. Um, I definitely do want to put on more muscle. Yeah. Like, I don't want to get any skinnier, that's for sure. Um, maybe put on a little bit of fat as well. Um, but yeah, I've been to a place before when I couldn't sit on my butt because the bones were piercing through and that was not <laughs> comfortable. Wow. So, yeah, there's a lot of critics out there. I try to, I, you know, I listen, but at the same time, I don't take it to the heart because yeah. I know my journey. I know where I've been and I know I'm getting better. So, yeah, that's that. Yeah, for sure. And you haven't got an eating disorder anymore and you have a very healthy relationship with food. And you're not telling people to restrict their calorie intake or do anything unhealthy in any way, shape or form. So I think your message on what you're sharing on Instagram is actually a very positive one. So, 
Yeah, before we end, do you think there's anything else that is important for people to hear before we end the interview that we haven't already talked about? Um, honestly, I just want people to do their own research and look both ways. Like, go check out um, videos that are not vegan, you know, that yeah. um, talk about the truth like what it really is like go to your local farmers and see how animals are treated like it's not what you see in all those videos like all yeah. those you know, conspiracy or whatever it may be the forks over knives and all the other stuff that's out there like it's not like that you know and i'm a full um supporter of local farmers and farms and you know, for whatever it may be, not even meat, but even your fruits and vegetables. If you're a vegan and or vegetarian and fruitarian and you're eating, you know, stuff like pineapples that are being imported from across the world, like, do you really think that you, you're helping anybody or yeah. anything at all, you know? So do your own research. Like, don't listen to me. Don't listen to anybody else. Just go out there and find information about and, and look both on both sides you know and find out for yourself yeah that's really good just becoming as conscious as you can around your food choices because like you said eating fruits or even other plant-based foods can come from monocrops where they just have deforestation it destroys the soil it destroys the environment it harms a lot of animals um so yeah what one, one thing i'll just ask you quickly actually before we end is like so would you say you're more of a pro like pasture raised animal food sources type of person or are you someone that is a real believer in the factory farming? What is your whole experience with that? And do you eat primarily, yeah, what type of sources do you normally buy from? I personally believe in regenerative farming, mm. which is, um, I support farms where, um, the farmers practice the type of farming that is essentially carbon negative and there are farms like that in the u.s and um i've actually i've created a product um, that's a meat product and we only source meat from those farms ah. um and i want to stay away from I do believe in grass fed. I do think that glyphosates are a thing that are, you know, are a huge thing that are unhealthy. I don't know how much of it ends up in the meat itself. Like, I don't know, like, this is something that I want to do testing for. It is a little bit expensive at that time, but when I can afford it, like, I'm just going to run a few tests yeah. to see how much of those uh, end up in, in meat, you know, from cows that are raised on um and feedlots and whatnot um could you just quickly for anyone who doesn't know when you say carbon negative what does that mean exactly i know what it means but a lot of our viewers won't know well essentially you know like most vegans know that their whole excuse that you know cow cows are basically the reason for the whole um global warming and unhealthy air and everything that's going on out there that's basically bad in the environment are caused by cows belching, burping, farting, you know. Yeah. So there are farmers who uh, practice the way of farming that the carbon, that gas that sticks around in the atmosphere for probably like around 10 years and damages the, um, the layer environment, everything that we can say that it causes. Um, is uh, they practice um, the type of farming that actually uh, get rid of that gas. Yeah. It's different. Um, it's, and we've done that in Poland as well. You know, here it's kind of something new, but like back in Poland, that was a normal thing that everybody uh, okay. knew how to do. You know, we never used all those chemicals on when we grew fruit, the uh, vegetables, and when we grew potatoes or whatnot, like we never used it. Now I think they're required to, be, ah. thanks to Monsanto, you know, like our wow. uh, Monsanto is another uh, yeah. you know, like yes. people that I just cannot stand. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, that's cool. But, um, but yeah, so those are the farmers who, who, pra who practice that kind of farming yeah. that gets, essentially gets rid of uh, that gas and they have tests that show 
that they the, uh, the carbon is negative and they like white oak pastures if anybody wants to look them up they have all that stuff on the, their website and that's one of the farms that I'm working with um, uh. where I'm sourcing the meat from for my product and so that's what I support that's what I believe in because here in the US like outside of the US I do believe that it's like grass fed meat is normal it's everywhere you have to pay extra to pay to get grain fed meat because it's fattier and all that stuff you know so here in the US it's the opposite uh. um, and here when I was starting my company it was very interesting to find that I can source meat from outside of US and that's grass fed and it's probably half cheaper of what I get wow. here in the US and it can still be labeled as U.S. source because as long as it's it's uh, imported from outside, like New Zealand, let's say, and caught up in the U.S., you can still label it yeah. as uh, in U.S. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this is so crazy to me. I'm like, how and why is it cheaper? Like, I'm importing it all the way from New Zealand or Europe, and it's still cheaper to get it from there than <laughs> something from a local farmer. Yeah, I think that's really good that you make people aware of that because that's something that's definitely going on, especially with the whole going on in the world, that people think uh, they're getting stuff from America when it isn't, and it's lower quality, It's the regulations are not good with it, and it comes from very bad companies that are not very trustworthy. Right, yeah, and you know, here in the US, like majority, it's kind of funny because majority of the meat processing plants are owned by I think Brazilian companies yes. and what's the other one um might be China I think yes yeah. but it's insane <laughs> it's, it's crazy I think this whole pandemic is making a lot of people realize um or at least open their eyes to what's really going on within like the food system and really I'm hoping that it makes people uh, want to support the local farmers yeah. like it doesn't have to be necessarily grass fed, but as long as you go to your local people and support those people, because it, it really, um, having a farm, a beef farm or whatever it may be, it's, it's really time consuming. Like I know this is, it's not a hobby. Like this no. is your life. Once you commit to, um, raising cattle or whatnot, this becomes your life. There's no weekends off. There's it's hard work. And those people, do deserve to get paid it might be more expensive but at the end of the day it's really good thing to yeah, do yeah yeah and i think it's really important that you mentioned that where like by support supporting your local farmer they're you're they're helping you you're helping them and it's just yeah. it's, it's better yeah it's just better in so many different ways you're not funding these big companies out there like cargill and these other companies that yeah from china it's better um, you know even for environment as well if you think how many um, uh, things you're cutting out just by basically you're just going to a yeah. farmer. If you, let's say, if you do eat a lot of meat and you just buy a half a cow, that will last you for a very long time, unless you're a male yeah. carnivore, that yeah. might not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's but you're saving on driving to uh grocery stores all the time, you know, and then again, you're not paying for all this transportation you know that's also is contributing to negative environment yeah. so yeah which is a more environmentally friendly diet like for sure that without a doubt unlike importing fruits and vegetables from all around the world or the fossil fuels and gas greenhouse gas emissions that it causes um yeah it's just yeah it's like the vegans say it's the most environmentally friendly diet but like you said if you eat half a cow or one cow a year like and it's local like that especially if it's coming from like a pasture-raised source, it's actually going to improve the environment. Unlike the vegans that say, the cherry pick and just say in the documentary as well, all factory farming and all like farming methods for animals is bad for the environment. It's bad, it's bad for everything in every single way. It's just not that clear cut. Right. Or, yeah. I mean, there's so many resources out there showing that without the input of the animals, there would be there's not going to be soil. There's not going to be healthy soil that they can't even grow any vegetables on. So you're trying to get rid of something that's essentially making this planet thrive, you know, and 
yeah, just go out there and learn a little bit more, you know, like how, it, what it really takes to um, keep this planet healthy. And there's really good information out there. So, yeah, just go and, and really look if you want to find out. Yeah, so the whole diet switch around has just been a win-win in every single way, unlike what a lot of vegans would tell you out there. So it's really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely has been. And that's the thing, like my priority, my beliefs, um, or my, you know, like what I've been trying to accomplish, they haven't changed from when I was vegan to now. Like I still want to make the, whatever's the best for this planet to keep it healthy. Like right now I don't have kids, but maybe one day I will. And I want to keep this planet as healthy as possible for oh. them, you know? And yeah, for sure. if, even if I don't, like I do have brother and sister, maybe they're going to have kids and just for other people, you know, just keep it thriving. So I, I still do believe that that's still, you know, that hasn't changed for me from going vegan to, to carnivore. Like I didn't turn into like a vicious person that's just <laughs> want everything around me you know because that would vegan vegans will make you uh want to believe that it, this is what's going to happen you know yeah. like i would say that i'm even more compassionate than i was before and i'm i'm more calm and kind of level headed than i was before and yeah it hasn't definitely like the diet hasn't changed that no it's just improved you in every single way possible yeah yeah it's really really amazing to hear and yeah, your, your story is just like really, really surreal for people to hear. It's just amazing to hear that you got to the point of where you're at now, for sure. Yeah, yeah thank it's, you. Yeah, it's really good. Um, yeah, so yeah, thank you very much. And oh yeah, that's one thing I was gonna add, you could look into this, but I saw yesterday, cause you mentioned glyphosates, which are just like bad for everything, your, yourself, the in soil. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is put links down below for social media platforms, like I said earlier on in the video so you can get in touch with her and yeah you can read a lot of her inspirational and also educational posts on instagram which are really really yeah. cool <laughs> thank so you. yeah thank you very much for joining us today. thank you so much yeah, yeah it was fun yeah yeah it was really fun so yeah leave your comments questions down below don't forget to like share and subscribe and enjoy the rest of your amazing day peace